Okay, my wonderful friends, why is space a vacuum? This is just 2020, and they're saying that it's a vacuum is an empty place. There's virtually nothing there whatsoever, which space nearly achieves. Well, let's talk about what is in space. Okay, my friends, so space is there's nothing out in space. Well, every thing we know about in space, we see the planets, we see the moons, we see the stars, but we see things radiating. What are they radiating? Well, they're radiating light. Well, what is light? Well, they don't know what it is. They think it's nothing. They think it's the light just is nothing. Well, I can tell you one thing for a fact. This is light, and when light comes from the sun, it's a particle, and when it comes through space, it's still a particle. <laughs> When it hits the Earth, it's still a particle. When it hits a solar panel and drives another particle into conduction, it is still a particle. So what is happening in space is it is completely saturated, saturated with particles. And what does that mean? We spin through space and we scrub those particles. And can I show that they're particles? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because that is a red laser. That is a red laser actually accelerating. And this is the particle we see, we see in the acceleration. And it's black and white. And it is the exact same particle that CERN and Fermilab is looking for and we have found. This is red light. And all of these little tiny particles here are concussing because this magnetic field has to force its way through. The particle's tiny. This is the particle, but the wave around it is absolutely gigantic, huge. And as it goes through the air, everything has to get out of its way. Now it's stacking up on top of another one, and that is what causes it to glow. They don't glow at all. You see nothing in these pictures. You see zero until there is high energy impact. You see here? Here you can see it glowing like hell. It's glowing like the metal on the edge of a knife. This one here. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. Zero, 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 zero. I guarantee you there's electrons in there. We cannot see them because they are not radiating. They are not illuminating. They are not enraged <laughs> with violent reactions, which these are. And they radiate out like hell. And that's why we can see them. And they know this. This, this, this is not an un, unknown thing. It's, if you look back at 2014, they knew very well. But just put in smart, smartphone cosmic ray detectors from 2014. And they knew about it. They, they were the same, it were same exact principle as the, the most expensive you know, detectors that they have. It was, it was CMOS. That's all it is. It's the, it's the, it's the particle film that... Uh, accepts the radiance that can turn on the pixels. That's the key. And that's all it is. And it's cheap. And they're in, they're, they're in all your cell phones. And that's why we can see these particles, even though they are the size of electrons. We can see them. We can see the dark particle. Nobody's ever seen it before. And I, the reason I know, well, the reason I think that they don't realize there's anything in space is because the glowy white particle has almost no mass to it. It has no ma almost no mass at all. It, I showed in a nuclear explosion. Watch. This is what happens when they split up. All right, they know this. And they've seen these. They've seen the black and the white ball t together, and then they see them split off, and the black ball stays just like this black ball, and the white ball goes into a shower. Well, we had this happen because we're not letting that white ball, a black ball, get through this little tiny, tiny, tiny slit. And it's a venturi slit. It's a compression slit. So the fields of the white ones, which is a lot, it, it, the white ones can squish and do all that. The black ones, boop. That's it. Case closed. They do nothing more than like a bowling ball. Chip. They don't do anything. The white ones are like the pins. Pew! They go flying. And what's happening here, I think, is because of the restriction and the pulsation, the black balls being just like hammers now, they're the massive particles. They're the ones that have the mass. They do the pushing and shoving. Those are, they are massive and heavy duty. Those are the ones that do the explosion and a nuclear explosion. 
I think what they're doing is coming up here and go bam, bam, bam. And all the white ones in front of it, they're just squishing them like putty through there. Pushing them, boom, 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 boom. And, and the black ones can't get through, so they keep bouncing back off. And then they go around. 100% white, not a taste of black in there. And right back here, you see them, they're coming back together. It's exactly what CERN and Fermi Lab want to see, and there they are. And this is light. They're starting with billions, literally billions of particles. Then they have a dump. And then they go picking through the little bits and pieces of the dump, and they say, ooh, look at that, look at that, ooh, look at that, look at that. And they think they're all different elementary particles. They're not. Every single thing starts with the black and white ball, which is an electron. Put two of them together, back to back, they make a photon. You can break them apart. I can break that black ball away from that white. And then you have a sterile neutrino. But regardless of this, space is 100% saturated with particles. And we're scrubbing through them. That's the only reason we have a magnetic field. All right, this is the only reason that any one of the spheres in space has any magnetic field around it, because it's spinning its magnetic particles against the magnetic particles that is on coming into it. And that why you see them trailing away. I can't imagine why they don't understand this. It's just amazing to me. And you see, this is the, where the magnetic field goes out. Normally, they would go out a wire to the plus and minus and come back to the minus. It would go out through the minus and come back to the plus, let's say. But here, it just goes out into space. So they create these field effects wrapping right around a planet. That's all it is. That's the only reason we have a magnetic field. And the faster it would spin, the more strong that magnetic field would be. The slower it would spin, the less interaction creating less magnetism. Simple as that. And in the more particles you hit against it has the same effect. If we hit a weak place in space, we're not going to scrub as hard. Obviously, it's just as, it's obviously, it's not going to be as many particles. If there's a ton of particles, we're going to scrub like hell, and it's going to glow like the metal on the edge of a knife. All right, the moon doesn't spin like we spin. The moon's magnetic field is less than one thousandth as powerful as the Earth. They thought it was the same as ours a long time ago, and it just somehow disappeared. This is, I just can't understand how these people are running the show. This is, I just can't understand. I mean, they see the solar wind. They know there's this light all coming at us. They show it pushing us back. They call it the bow shock. And they still act like there's nothing in space. It's absolutely amazing. All right, this is the reality of space. Our electrons are scrubbing the electrons that are in what they used to call the ether of space, which is nothing more than a soup of electrons. The, the, a light is not nothing. I just showed you it's a particle. We scrub through them 2,700 degrees on our, on our ionosphere out here, where it scrubs against space, which is supposed to be nothing. Well, why is it 2,700 degrees? And why is the sun... 7,000 on its surface and where it scrubs is millions because it has a lot more particles than we have. So it has a lot more to press out against the particles that are out there. This is, it, it, it's flooded, completely flooded with those particles. Until we understand that, we just it's just absolute nonsense what they're doing in Fermi Lab and CERN and all these places. They don't know, even know what the electrons are made of and what photons are made of. They know they can smash protons and they see these little bits and pieces, but they have so many bits and pieces, they just think they're all different types of bits and pieces. They're not. They all start from one, and then you just add a little more and more and more. And that starts to make atoms. Atom, every, the tiniest nucleus that's stable is one proton's worth, and that's 1,839 electrons. So take it from there. And that's flood space, 100%.